Okay, so I'm standing in our raspberry and garlic patch right now. Eventually this is gonna be all raspberries. And this is the original garden that the owners before us uh, were gardening. And it was heavy till, uh, heavy fertilizer, heavy roundup use. Um, and so over, over time the soil really kind of got degraded. And we're dealing with the repercussions of that now. And actually, since taking the acreage over, um, we've really noticed the explosion of, of what most people call weeds. We don't really see them that way. Um, but weeds are just indicators. They're indicator species of what's going on in the soil. Um, and so dandelions are a great example of that. And, and we have an absolute explosion of dandelions. And I'm not sure if you can see that in the, the far distance there. I'll get some B-roll here while we're filming so you can get a sense of it. Um, and so uh, dandelions uh, are an interesting plant because they uh, indicate a whole bunch of stuff that's going on inside of your your garden. And so number one, they've got uh, a taproot. And so the taproot indicates compaction. Uh, and so when you've got lots of compaction, you're gonna get lots of plants that have taproots. Um, number two, they are indicative of a high, high nitrates. And so there's probably a lot of uh, fertility floating around in a water soluble form, so not bound in microbes. And so these guys are trying to bind up that nitrogen. Um, they love nitrates. And so if you want to get rid of them, you have to deal with the overabundance of nitrates in the soil. Um, and then uh, number three, they can also indicate a calcium deficiency. And so as a result of that, um, you know, we're mulching, we're adding compost. Um, we're chopping and dropping as we go. It's hard to keep up with the chopping and dropping. There's just so much vegetation growing um, in the garden. <clears throat> and so um, those are all the things that we're trying to do to remediate inside of the garden. But we still have this intense weed pressure uh, coming in from the outside. And so we want to start uh, or, or reduce the amount of pressure coming in from the, the lawn. That's the other thing is that the grass is going to want to migrate into the garden. And so the way that we're going to manage that weed pressure or even the grass migration is by uh, cover cropping around the outside of the garden. And so uh, we put in a seven species cover crop just uh, the other day. And what I did was I rototilled all the way around the garden. Um, and then I came back and I broadcast uh, the uh, the, the seeds, and so that was buckwheat, field pea, uh, annual rye. Um, we put in a couple annual clovers. Um, I can't remember all the different species we put in here. And, and so we put them at a fairly high density. And so you'll see kind of all the way along this strip, the plants are growing um, pretty rapidly, actually. They've had a really fantastic germination. And by having all those cover crops, we're going to uh, tie up that excess nitrogen that we just um, actually created as a result of rototilling. Um, we're gonna build an enormous amount of soil carbon. We're going to um, really help to speed up the, uh, the microbial activity in the soil. Um, but we're also creating this weed barrier, this biological weed barrier that's going to prevent the weeds on the outside from coming in or the grasses. I don't like using that word weeds. Um, it's not really a, a very uh, holistic understanding of what uh, these plants are actually doing. But, um, but everybody will know what I mean when I use the word weed. So um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about this today and maybe I'll take some footage of uh, what this cover crop um, row looks like. If you do see little grass seeds, uh, grass shoots popping out, that's actually the annual rye grass that's coming up. And so again, this will only be available uh, or growing for one season and then it'll die off. Uh, before the, uh, any of these cover crops go to seed, we're gonna mow it down either with a scythe or with a lawnmower. And so what that will do is it'll prevent them from going to seed, uh, which when a plant goes to seed, it extracts a ton of nutrient out of the soil. It's gonna create an incredible mulch for us. So we'll be able to use that mulch in the garden. Um, and then it'll, it'll kill the cover crop back and, uh, and protect the soil. And so I've actually done this in three separate gardens uh, in three different places uh, for different reasons. So some for just soil building, some to prevent um, perennial plants from migrating into an annual garden. I mean, this is actually ultimately going to be a, an, a perennial garden, which is why I'm not really too worried about the weeds here. Once the, the raspberries kind of get to full size, um, 
you know, nothing really can, can grow through raspberries. They're very, very robust plants. Uh, but in, in the interim, we're really trying hard to build that topsoil. So let's take a look at some of these cover crops emerging. And uh, I'd love uh, any feedback or, um, or questions that you've got in the comment section. Um, we love it when people leave comments. And uh, if you've done any of this type of cover cropping yourself, let us know. And if you've got any links to other great videos on cover cropping, I'm always looking to learn more stuff. So here's the cover crop compost row. And you can see the buckwheat coming out there real strong. And you can also get a sense of the kind of dandelions that we're dealing with on the outside. We've also got a lot of dandelions inside the garden as well. We've got to chop and drop all of these. Some of them are even going to seed right now, which we should be getting to here sooner rather than later. And so this goes all the way around the garden. And so we'll come and chop and drop all these dandelions and uh, we'll keep a close eye on the cover crop and how it does. Um, but this is a common thing when you take over somebody else's acreage that's been spraying and managing things in a different way. Um, you've got to deal with the transition between having herbicides and not having herbicides. And you can always tell when somebody uses a lot of herbicides or uh, requires an enormous amount of labor to uh, keep their acreage, you know, weed free. Um, and it's usually because they're using Roundup. Roundup is an amazing technology because it allows you to do an enormous amount of work with a very small amount of labor. Um, because a couple of quick sprays and you get rid of all of that weed pressure. But, um, you know, I was just listening to a podcast the other day from a guy named John Kempf. And, uh, he was interviewing an agronomist that were, used to work for the USDA about some of the research that they've done on pesticides and herbicides and specifically Roundup. And uh, while the Roundup, sorry, let me just adjust the camera angle here. While the Roundup does actually decompose after about a year or two in the soil, um, I can't remember the, the chemical it breaks down into. It's like ADA or something like that. The Roundup will actually, um, yeah, reduce into another chemical. And that other chemical is just as deadly as, as Roundup is. Uh, and it will stay present in the soil for another few years. And so that means that when you're growing gardens, at least for the first years while you're starting to fix your soil, you're going to be dealing with a lot of, of these uh, undesirable plants. Really, they're just symptoms of, of sick soil. Um, and so the appropriate approach to understanding them is to look at them as a symptom of a broken system and then try and understand uh, what it's identifying in terms of a root cause problem and, uh, and then start addressing those root causes. And over time, as you improve your soil health through mulch, through compost, through reducing tillage, um, you will get on top of it. Um, and ultimately, as it starts to disappear, it'll be an indication that, uh, is a pretty good indication that the nutrient density of the, the plants that you're growing in there uh, is increasing. So, um, Hopefully you found that interesting and uh, I'd love any comments uh, that you've got down below um, and uh, we'll see you guys next video.